A small bob in blue sits with headphones over each ear in a plush purple bean chair. Her eyes rest shut as she sways her head back and forth, smiling, squishing her cherry berry cheeks, pushing her eyes deeper within. Red hues grow along with the sonic painting as fairies emerge and multiply in threes. She giggles, along with the winged entities growing larger and larger in her vision. The strawberry red swirl she swims through soon turns to the white walls of the living room as her eyes open to the hunched over back of the performer sitting towards her right. She looks forward to a chemist cooking across from her in the kitchen. Dad! A fusion of smoke and steam erupt and boil over. The performer takes off his headphones and looks from a glass board. Kem, what are you doing? He asks as the chemist dances around boiling liquid while carrying infant blue. I'm cooking! He shouts from turning down flames. What are you doing besides having the world's government after you? Performing a show? Are you kidding me? The chemist laughs, waving the baby blue's hand at the performer who smiles and sinks back in the couch. I made a little track just now as a matter of fact. He motions to the glass. The chemist sets the infant on the kitchen counter. You want to hear? The performer adds. Yes! The little one says excitedly. Chem? Uh, I suppose. He comes into the room and sits beside the performer on the couch. Let's hear it, he says with a grin. The performer leans in towards the glass and taps. Sweetie, where's your brother? Um, she goes, I think in the back in his room. The chemist nods. You have a son? The performer asks. The chemist gives an awkward look. Oh, yeah, that. He chuckles. Well, let's listen. The performer swipes his red finger along the glass, amping the volume. Don't forget before you leave, I have a care package for you. The chemist says. You'll need it. Close your eyes. It's better, the performer says. Man, mate, when was the last time I seen you? It's been quite some time, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. Wow. It's beautiful. You just made this, just now. It's the chemist ass. <laughs> yeah, mate says. The chemist's eyes shut, drifting his head along with his daughter's. You got any words for it? Hmm. Mate thinks. Said my name's mate and looking for a date, huh? <laughs> Said my name's mate and I'm looking for a date, huh? The chemist and daughter, baby blue, each laugh and drift into the song more. These motherfuckers know where I'm at, come get me then. These motherfuckers know where I'm at, come get me then. Damn, mate! The chemist says and sits up. These motherfuckers know where I'm at. Come get me then. The chemist moves his eyes from the furry carpet below to a small speck dot standing on the table. They do know where you're at, the chemist whispers. Mate! He shouts, grabbing him. They do know where you're at! What? He shakes. Mate! Look! He points to the dot soldier. Mate's eyes drop as the chemist runs to the kitchen, opens it, ignites a small glass box. Mate! He looks back. Throw it! Throw it here! Mate looks down and reaches fast for the dot. Throw it! Mate flicks his red finger and the microscopic soldier cartwheels through the air, going into the glass box and combusts. You gotta go now, the chemist says. Back door, there's a bag I got for you. He shouts running to the front door, opening it. Go, mate! Chem! Mate says, standing, looking for the little blue with fiery red hair. Mate, go! I've been waiting for the day to stop these cocksucking motherfucking governors, motherfuckers! He shouts, looking to the door as choppers fly to. Go, mate! Do what you're meant to! Mate nods to the chemist and his children who begin strapping up in gear. Thank you, he says, and turns to a tight hallway. Noises come from the room to his right where a large gel-like mound slowly slugs out from him. Oh my, mate says, passing by the slimy trail that travels into the hall. He turns into the other room, spotting up a small plastic bag with a syringe. Mate grabs it and jumps out a window on a metal platform and ladder. 
He steps out and sees a pair of blues, one tall and thin, the other short and round, and the street below, staring back. Mate takes a step back, strapping the strap of his blue overalls as he makes his way up a ladder.